George Byrne, tattoo artist from Amwell, West London. Been in the shop 43 years in that shop. Been tattooing for 53 years. Where it was, um, at one time, it was like very mystique. It was like Gypsy Rosalie, you were scared to go in, so you, you teased your mates, now you go in first now, and it was sort of like, the shops then was always closed up, you could never see inside. The only way to see inside if you go in, so you sort of like teach your mate to go in first and it had that mystique or things hanging on the wall and you know ready sort of that sort of circusy type look and um, there was always just one guy I mean it's just sat, sat in the corner and you either you'd always pick one off the wall or you know if you couldn't afford you see say how much you got and whatever you said was the right price <laughs> and then you got it done like and um, so in that way I love that time I'm glad that I started when I did that I haven't missed that period of the trade. Because now, um, I know things change, they've got to change, okay, but the way it is now, with open fronts, four or five tattooists, you go to the receptionist, oh, can you do one? Oh, yeah, I'll see if um, Steve or someone can fit you in. That atmosphere and mystique has gone. So that is one side of it, I think it's changed a lot. Well, yeah, you know, I've done interviews before years and years ago and I said it can't get no better, but it has. You're never too old to learn. You know, it's, you know, like some tattoos that say, oh, I've got my pride, I wouldn't, wouldn't ask him how he'd done that. But, you know, I'm that type that would go up to him and say, how did you do that? How did you get that? Because you're never too old to learn. I used rotaries years ago from a guy called Big Jock in King's Cross. And they was very long and heavy, so they sort of like, so, you know, if you've got big hands like me, it was fine, but they was mega good. There's so many ones now that are good, but I still prefer his ones were really good. So if you buy, you know, like a machine now, it's always good for the first week, and, it's, and you think, oh, no, it's a good after all, but, you know, all that side of it's changed a lot, yeah. I used to do all styles, but... Um, now I just do, I specialise in big stuff like sleeves, back pieces, mainly the Japanese style of work. Because I started doing that, I was the, the very, one of, one of the first to start it, I mean, in, the, in, um, in the 70s. You know, I started doing sleeves and big Jap work. And then I've, I sort of went off that a bit and was going into the macabre type of stuff. And then I went back to the Japanese because that's where my heart is in the Japanese work. So now I just work by appointment and just do what we you know want. Like years ago, there was no such thing. We used to have like an artist meeting where the public was not allowed in. And I think it was about 1979, um, a guy from the States, he'd done the first convention and to let the public in. And then it went on from there and that created more interest. And then you had the tattoo magazines, creates more interest. And then when it really went strange was when Miami Ink started and it just exploded then. But everyone was coming in my shop with bits of paper and tears in their eyes saying like their goldfish has died and trying to copy what them people were saying, you know, so, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, the conventions can be good and bad. So I just like to go to like the prime ones, the good ones, because there's some that you can go to, like you can walk around in half hour and you've seen it, and you get ones like this one where you've got all good names and the work is good, and it's, you know, it's good.